Hey guys, Anthony, full before diesel. Just wanted to um, explain a few important things about air intakes and um, so a little bit about snorkels and um, the air box, um, the ceiling issues and whatever, whether they're issues or not. Um, <clears throat> any workshop or four wheel drive workshop that changes air filters on four wheel drives that get used in outback dusty conditions that are used as four wheel drives should be using rubber grease on those filters where on the ceiling area on the rubber um, look we've been doing that for decades um, there is workshops that don't do that we do see vehicles come in here that have been places that do that um, and that's good so some places are doing it but not all of them so this is the deal, alright? So I just want to say in the top left corner of this picture, you'll see the snorkel. This is how this vehicle came in. It's a Safari snorkel on a 150 Prado. It is facing backwards and, you know, a lot of people look at that and go, <laughs> Look at him, you know, he's got it ran the wrong way, What a, you know, whatever. Anyway, what a smart guy because, you know what, he's been listening. And, you know, by having it facing forward, you're not getting any performance increase really I mean you've got a turbocharger there that will suck and pump in the air that it needs right forced air induction as long as there's not a restriction there you know but there's other theories as well that people have shared over the years and look you know some people seem to think they're more than just theories but let's call it a th theory to save arguments sake right um, when the snorkels facing forward because of the air rushing hitting and going in through there it's a bit like a river you know where it goes around a bend of shallow or deep parts over rocks or whatever and there's a lot of turbulence and that sort of upsets the airflow a little bit by having it facing the other way it does a lot of positive benefits um, it allows the engine to suck the air in at the rate that it wants without restriction it creates a low pressure behind the head so um, it can do that and obviously it's more aerodynamic that way so you know that could possibly help with fuel economy I don't know I don't really care. The biggest reason for me, this is not my vehicle, but my vehicle, I've run the snorkel head backwards for years. Um, I'm not even interested in trying it around the other way to do any comparison tests. The biggest reason for me is, it having it facing forward, it collects everything, mate. Every dirt, every bit of dirt, bug, moth, you know, you name it, whatever. If you're off-road, you've noticed, you know, you snorkel it drags through some trees every now and then, it's all just gonna go straight in there. This way, it doesn't. It, the branches drag over it more easily. Again, for people that use their vehicles off-road, what they're designed to be used for. And if you don't, possibly you should not have a full drive because you know, you're putting a cost on the environment and maybe the vehicle's not suitable for you, but that's another story. Um, if you do use it off-road, you will have noticed you know, all those overgrown tracks and the branches and sticks and places, not even that overgrown. I mean, it's up there in a pretty high position it's easy for a branch to be at that point, you know, hitting against the snorkel and they can easily get caught up. I had a, I've actually got a vehicle still here. It's got the snorkel head backwards also, but all the mesh is broken away. And obviously from facing forward where, whether it's rocks or sticks, whatever's hit it, I don't know, or wasn't there, but it is broken and it hasn't replaced it. And um, it's facing backwards. So I suggest facing backwards, it's not gonna suck anything in there now that shouldn't go in there. So. That's the first part. We believe the snorkel head facing backwards is the go. And if you want some evidence to back that up, go and have a, take a look at a, um, hit up Google for a new 200 series Land Cruiser in a GX model. And it comes with a snorkel standard and you'll see a big box up on top and the holes are in the back of it. So basically, you know, this is something we've been doing for a long time and I didn't notice that any manufacturers really had it had this sort of design but a couple of years ago or so notice on the GX with the holes in the back so that kind of backs up the theory a little bit um, so that's the snorkel head part of it then there's what else do you do with your airbox once you fit a snorkel um, because you've got that what we call the pre-spinner it's called a pre-spinner but it doesn't actually spin so I'll explain that a bit more so the pre-spinner as it's called is actually inside the box here okay now you won't see it we're going to take this air filter out and check or replace it as part of it's due for replacement but i have a feeling it's been um, replaced before before it was due but anyway we'll get to that um, 
this is the pre-spinner area here. So there's a little, we'll call it like a fan. It's not a fan, it just sits there. It's a fixed unit. You know what I mean if you've seen it. If you want to see it, then you can take your air box out, take the lid off under the bolts that mount it to the guard and take it right out and have a look in the end from the guard side here and you'll see what it is. And what that does is all the air, dust, dirt and water and everything that goes through down that snorkel. Um, and if you've got it facing forward, you are going to collect some rainwater and it's going to go down into your box and you want it to be able to drain out somewhere. So what that does, it separates everything, okay? It separates all the dirt, the water and a lot of the dust, you know? So a lot of the dust that goes in there, it does spin out, get separated. So here, this is the outer part of it here. There's an outer and an inner. So there's like a sleeve down the middle, if you know what I mean. And so it throws everything to the outside that goes into that compartment. Sort out that phone call one sec. So it separates in that compartment and it all falls to the bottom and it comes out this little um, one-way valve. There's like a rubber one-way valve on there, okay. This one's not a one-way valve, because whoever fitted this Safari snorkel, they've covered up the hole that you would inspect the air filter with, which I'd say is quite silly, because there's a hole there that you can look and obviously check your air filter, but in this case you can't. If your vehicle's in water this deep, right, we're talking, it's nearly to the top of the uh, driver's door, the car's floating away, you've got big problems. Blocking that hole isn't gonna save anything, right? They've also blocked up this on the bottom here. I'm gonna look, I'll be a bit nervous about taking it off to be honest because yeah, I'm not even gonna try and get it off because I think the whole thing's silicon on there. Um, the whole one-way valve. Sorry about that, we got interrupted by a phone call. So I was saying, I think I was saying, I don't know where I was actually, this basically, you know, you wanna separate all that dirt and water and get it out, but it's not gonna happen. And no doubt they've probably blocked up the three little holes in the bottom of the air box here. And I've done a video on that. They're very small. That's quite, the bottom of the airbox is quite high, especially if you've got a lift. This vehicle has and it's on standard suspension. I could measure it, but I can tell you already, that's just below my waist height. So with a lift, you're about waist height. If I walk up the side of the vehicle here, waist height for me, it's just below the door handle. That's very deep water. Um, you'd need to be in the water a long time. And obviously it's only going to suck the water in up to a certain level. It's, it's going to bring the air through, run the engine. You're going to be in, if it's that deep, you're going to be momentarily in and out of it, 10 seconds or whatever. It's not enough to fill the air box to get it through the air filter and into the engine. Look, it's up to you guys. I'm just giving you advice. I believe the right way to fit a snorkel is to leave this functioning, leave those holes available to drain water out and leave that hole open as well. It's a vehicle, it's a motor vehicle, it's not a boat, and by putting a snorkel doesn't turn it into a boat and make it invincible. The other areas the water come in, comes in is at the back behind the bumper bar because the airflow system is air comes in at the front underneath these, underneath these plastic trim on, if you can see that in the picture there. We'll explain all this another day, you can't really see that, but we'll explain how that system works. What I really wanted to say, there's a lot of talk about, you know, air boxes and they're not being sealed properly and leaking and this sort of thing. It's not a new problem and it's maybe not really a problem. What you've got to understand is that this diesel engine is going to suck the air that it wants to run. It is going to get the air from somewhere. So if you're in dusty conditions and you've got a blocked air filter element, this is all blocked up, right? Let's just have a look. I haven't looked at it yet. This one's not bad. It hasn't been in dust. This is an on-roader, right? mainly on road you can see it's black it's probably got the next car in front of its diesel fumes and soot stuck into it see how it's all black um and funnily enough i haven't got another one in here in stock i've just run out so i have to go yeah. into phone calls interrupting things but anyway where was i yeah that that blackness there it's probably the filthy coming out the tailpipe of the nissan in front of you i can say that now nah, nissans are awesome too it could be a few nissan owners watching it's all good so look at the end of the day this one's an on-roader. I don't usually put grease on the, the seal of the on-roader, so this could be a good example where, look, you know, you can see the, a little bit of dirt up the side. Now I'm just gonna look into the clean side of the air box. And this is what I see all the time, right? Once these filters become blocked with fine dust, and that's what happens, the engine's gonna try and pull it. So it's either gonna pull it through the element anyway, or past the seal or something, which you're gonna get a bit of fine dust with it then, right? So the bigger stuff will be trapped here, but with that air that it needs, it's gonna to to take some of that dust with it. And then, of course, that's how your map sensor gets dirty. We all know this, Toyota know this, that's why they say clean the map sensor, da da da, you know, blow air, bursts of air over it. 
you know, quite a lot of us use proper mass sensor cleaner. Haven't had an issue using that. Toyota may not like that. That's up to them, fair enough. But when you look in there, the clean side's clean mainly because it doesn't go off-road, okay? But if you have a vehicle, an off-roader, that's, you're following, look, stay out of people's dust. Back off, okay? Back off, stay out of the dust is your biggest thing. Um, but if you've got grease on that seal, it seals it up. It works massively better. So I believe a lot of it's coming past the seal. It's been that way for years because, you know, oh, look, I'll show you. Okay? I may have shown this in another video, right? I use it very sparingly, right? Can anyone tell me how old this tub is, right? Castrol rubber grease, right? It's from about, it's from the 90s, okay? That's what's left. I've been using it sparingly, not much. A little bit left there. And it's very expensive now, actually. The Castrol one's about 40 something dollars at Repco. Repco, I mean, sorry. So anyway, I went for the pen, right? Which retails, I think it was high 20s anyway. I haven't used it yet, but look, same rubber grease. There it is, rubber grease, happy days, all right? So that's the replacement tub we'll get into soon. But you use it sparingly. You don't need to just put the stuff everywhere, just around the rubber seal, around the outside and on both sides of it, you know what I mean? So I'll sort of run it along here and also on this side here, trying not to make a mess everywhere. Once you get that sealed up properly, you take note. I suggest what you do is, you do what I just did, you take the box off, look in, see if it's dusty, run your finger there, and quite often I'll go, yeah, look at the dust, and you can see it. Once you put the rubber grease on there, we don't see the issue. Now, of course, if you block the air filter up enough, it will pull some dust past there. So there's all this talk about crappy air box quality and whatever, and I don't really know about those. I really mainly just work on 1KDs. You know, we get into a few other cars and whatever, but I don't see these issues. And then there's people saying that if you put grease on them, it's okay. Well, what does that tell you? So nothing's changed, not a big deal. Anyway, I could be wrong. That's my little video on snorkels, air intakes, which way you might want it to face, whether you want to wreck your pre-spinner, block up your box, block up your holes, and have dust going past your seal, or whether you don't. My advice is, as I said, genuine filters with this pre-filter, they're expensive, but you know what? You get what you pay for, I guess. Um, rubber grease on there, standard air box, snorkel with your head facing backwards, or alternatively, you can take a step back and not have a snorkel, and you probably don't need one if you haven't wrecked your front bumper bar by cutting it up and letting all the dust enter in around behind the bull bar because up inside that guard here on the side there where the snorkel's fitted stays nice and clean and dry and everything until you do that so and the intake is up quite high so just have a think about it before you fit a snorkel or a bull bar because less is more all right guys you know the deal subscribe if you haven't already i really appreciate you watching and if you watch till the end if you're happy with that information give us a thumbs up if you disagree you can give us a thumbs down if you want but it's just negative just you know just think it through before you make a decision what you're going to do on your vehicle just trying to give you the right advice thanks for watching have a nice day see ya All right, so a genuine filter, you can see the grease. It doesn't need to be smothered, it's just wet on the outside and on that side as well, all right? Maybe a little bit on this side, not so much. It's the this side that we want to have the grease on, around there and on the outside, all right? And we're just gonna pop that back in. Light in there to show you what's going on, but anyway, best we take that out. Right. Genuine filter will just sit in place like that beautifully. It actually helps get the lid on on some vehicles. Look, you can see there's quite a lot of movement there. That's how they are. I think it squeezes the seal this way, so it doesn't matter about that movement. You need to be able to fit the filter in there and put your full clips back on. Piece of cake, you know. There's nothing we can really do about these blocked holes. That's how it's been fitted. Um, I suppose each to their own how they want to do that or have it done. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, this is a bit of a comparison for you. Someone asked me, can't you just make the videos in daylight or something along those lines? Similar comment. Well, this is daylight. This is actually sunlight. So actually sun's on the job. See if you like it or not. Personally, I think in the workshop with the light shining on it, 
works a bit better but you can uh, let me know in the comments if you like now this is obviously whenever you replace the air filter in a four wheel drive definitely at least you should be <coughs> cleaning the MAF sensor so carefully lock any plug press the tab carefully disconnect the plug there's two screws cautions with those is don't lose them so that comes one and when you put them back in don't over tighten them so out with the other one this is the MAF sensor MAF mass air flow king of sensors right now I don't know how much you can see there in that sunlight or not but it's a bit of a trial this one's not too bad I've obviously cleaned it before because it's got the molly coat I don't put it on here because it gets untidy I put it in the hole so I get a rag I'll stuff it in the hole clean the hole I'll give this a clean up and with the C CRC brand mass airflow ripoff mass airflow sensor cleaner and put a little bit of molly coat in the hole there so the o-ring slips in you don't want to damage this o-ring right I've seen them come in before and they're pinched out because people are jamming in there. You don't want to do that, all right? So we've got to go and clean that. So look, there wasn't much to clean, but uh, we cleaned it anyway. There it is, nice and clean. We'll just sit that there for a minute. As I said, oh, you can work out the directions on the can and where to spray that. You need to clean outside here. There's a little sensor. Don't touch anything, including the little the nozzle thing. Don't touch anything. And down in there are your hot wires. Hard to see. Don't poke anything or touch anything down in there. Just the spray. And make sure you use the right product don't accidentally pick up the wrong can or you could be in trouble right so we're just going to use a bit of an average clean dirty rag just to wipe that hole out all right so that's clean again like i said the molly coat we use it on pretty much all the o-rings and stuff whether it's injectors or the seals around the top of the valve cover right i don't really care how much i use i just want it lubricated and you know what, any dirt that gets through there is going to stick on that area as well. So we'll just sit the tube up there. Basically to lubricate this O-ring. But like I said, if you put it here, it just gets messy and you've got that... You don't want that. You don't want it gets hot and it melts and goes down there. So we just um, put it in the hole. Right, carefully put that in the hole. Bada boom, bada bing. Right. Of course, always awkward as usual on videos because I'm trying to... I don't know why, I'm trying to stay out of the way of things so you can see what's going on, doesn't always work out anyway. Screw in the hole, don't drop it. Like I said, it's just plastic. So it's not gonna, come, just till it stops, just give it a little nip, just tight enough so it's not gonna come out. Making it tight isn't gonna do anything except wreck the plastic and rip it out of the air box. There's plenty of other people that have probably already done that for you. I expect to see that in the comment as well. Oh yeah, you know, they did that to mine. And plug it in, click, job done, right? I don't know what that mess is, that wasn't me. But anyway, we're going to give it a clean up anyway. Happy days, that's a new air filter with grease on the seal and a clean MAF sensor so the air intake system of the vehicle is running in peak condition. Let me know what you thought about the daylight video. Thanks for watching.